What's going on, everybody? Machiavelli Mills TV. I want to thank y'all for rocking with me. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. I, I, I greatly appreciate it if y'all get the likes up on all my videos. The likes really help me out for sure, for sure. And it helps to spread awareness about these videos as well. Also, um, you know, thank y'all for just leaving the comments a lot, sharing the videos. It means a lot. Let's get to the topic at hand. So let's get into the boxing talk. Terrence Bud Crawford, welterweight champion, retained his WBO welterweight title last night against David Avenesian. And he got it via six-round stoppage, right? Uh, Terrence was fighting in front of his hometown, uh, in, front, in front of his fans, I mean his friends and family in his hometown. So I knew he was going to be excited and pumped to try to get a, a big-time stoppage in that fight last night. So, And I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming a mile away. But after the fight, I got people coming to me and asking me, Am I impressed with Bud's performance against Avenesian? And also, does it does last night fight change my mind about the outcome of a, of a potential fight between him and Errol Spence Jr.? The answer to both of those questions is simply no to both of them, right? Am I impressed with what Terrence Bud Crawford did last night? No, because David Avenesian, David Anastasia, Anastasia, David and his niece and them, David Milka Magnesia, was the definition of light work all the way around. Um, to me, Avenesian was a glorified sparring partner. I don't care what a rankings had him at. What has Avenesian done at the welterweight level to make him a viable opponent? What has he done? I mean, what, he beat Josh Kelly when Josh Kelly had 12 fights? Uh, Oscari Metz, Liam Taylor, Jose Del Rio, Kerman Leraraga. I mean, he lost... To Mean Machine, got stopped by Mean Machine, right? So I knew Bud was going to stop him. Uh, he, he got stopped by Mean Machine. And then you, like, Lamont Peterson beat him by unanimous decision. And y'all told me Lamont won nothing. Lamont was trash. Lamont ain't never did nothing. Lamont was washed when he fought Errol Spence Jr. And that's the only reason Errol whooped up on him like that. And so it didn't really count when Errol beat him. And Lamont beat David Anastasia, Anastasia, Milka Magnesia, by unanimous decision. So I already knew what Bud was going to do. I told y'all Bud was going to go in there and stop dude in, in fine fashion. And it, it didn't tell me nothing new about Terrence. I know Terrence is a great fighter. I know he is. He passes the eye test. He is supremely skilled. I even have him being more skilled than my guy at welterweight, Errol, Errol Spence. He's more skilled than Errol. He has more skills in his toolbox, more tools in his toolbox than Errol, than Errol does. That doesn't always mean a person's going to win a fight, though. I always say that. People can do a whole lot of different things, but the other guy may do what he does very, very well at, a, at, a, at an exceptional level, and the other guy may not have an answer for it. So I'm still rolling with Arrow, but I always acknowledge that Terrence got more skills than Arrow. Um, over his career, he has better career achievements. Now, who got the better resume at 147 is not even close. Arrow spins by a, by a Mississippi mile, but... Terrence has been champion at 135, undisputed at 140. He's a champion at 147. So you got to respect that and salute that, right? It is what it is. I, even though I feel like Terrence Crawford's opponents at 140 would really like, um, they, the 140 division was like, um, was watered down during Terrence's reign, but he went out there and beat them guys and he got them belts. So you got to give him credit all the way around. He, he got them belts, man. So he deserves credit for being an undisputed champion and a champion in three different weight classes for sure. However, my criticism of this fight was that David Avenesian was like, dude was a nobody. Dude best win is against Josh Kelly and 45-year-old Sugar Shane Mosley. So it's like, bro, like, no. I'm not, he, nothing about his resume or his body of work told me he belonged in the ring with Terrence Crawford at all. And Terrence Crawford showed it. Terrence really carried the brother. He could have got him out of there before then. And everybody, all of, you know, a lot of people that don't like Errol Spence, you know, the Bud extremists are saying, y'all don't understand. This was a fight to prepare him for Errol. Avenesian is the same type of fighter as Errol, a pressure fighter. Man, Avenesian ain't in the same stratosphere as Errol Spence at all, which is why he lost by unanimous decision to Lamont Peterson, a guy who Errol Spence stopped because he ain't in the same category, the same dang on um, galaxy as Errol Spence. You know it and I know it. Errol Spence ain't getting stopped by Mean Machine, and he ain't getting beat by unanimous decision by Lamont Peterson at all. So all that, brother, we ain't, we ain't going for that. You know, his be Errol Spence's best win wouldn't be no 45-year-old Sugar Shane Mosley <clears throat> and Josh Kelly. So knock it off. Knock it off. 
All he could, like, no. Bud went out there and did what he was supposed to do because he was fighting a guy who was essentially like a, a he was, man, David Anesthesia, David Avenesia supposed to be your sparring partner, not a guy you supposed to be fighting when you didn't been a champion for years and years on end. No. No, I'm not, no, I'm not riding with that. I'm not rocking with that at all. He was light work. So Terrence went out there and did what he was supposed to do. Obliterate him. Obliterate that brother and send him into orbit. So yeah, Terrence went out there, send him into orbit, night, night, get my check. But this is the thing, because everybody always points to, well, and I always say this too, because I, I, um, Terrence is a great fighter, but again, outside of Sean Porter, I, I don't, he didn't fight any top world to waste, even though I think he would have still beat majority of them for sure. He would have beat them, but he didn't fight them. So some guys have questions about him, which I think are valid because they didn't see him fight the top guys. Me, I recognize just how skilled he is. And I feel like he would beat majority of the, the dudes at 147, Terrence Crawford, I'm saying. But if you don't fight him, people are leaving it up for conversation, right? Um, then, you know, um, and he beat Jeff Warren. I never fought him for fighting Jeff Warren because Jeff Warren had a belt, but Jeff Warren was never no great fighter. Benavidez was never great. You've seen the dude, what's the dude Errol Spence whooped on? What's the dude name? Errol Spence, the dude Errol Spence whooped on, just whooped on, uh, uh, no. What the heck? No, wait, hold on, hold on, wait a second, wait a second. No, I'm lying. The dude, Fundora went life and death with dude that Errol Spence whooped on and knocked out in the first round. Ocampo. Then, Jose Benavidez got whooped on and, and beat up on by uh, Danny Garcia. So, uh, you know, them dudes, whatever. But, yeah, man, so it's people that saying, hey, Terrence Crawford, we wanted to see more from him because he didn't fight the clear-cut the clear -cut opposition. Or the best clear-cut, op the, the best opposition without question. We know by the time he fought Kell Brook, Kell Brook was not the same at all. At all. It was years after Arrow fought him. So you know he wasn't the same. Then you had, what's the boy name? Glass Jaw, Amir Khan. My, my daughter can knock out Amir Khan. She hit him hard. So his Glass Jaw, he don't count. You know, so, yeah, but a lot of the uh, Terrence Crawford fans are saying that, oh, well, when not y'all have fighting? Y'all mad at the brother for getting his money. Y'all mad at the brother for getting paid. Again, Terrence Crawford fanatics always tell, you know, everybody else, including Errol Spence fans, it's about legacy, not about money. I don't see why Arrow want the biggest payday. It's about legacy. It's about legacy. They all about money at the PBC. That's why they trash. That's why they never do nothing because all they care about is money, money, money. But yet and still, they're trying to make excuses for uh, to validate Bud fighting Avanese and David Anesthesia because he was getting $10 million? Like, bro, no. Because all I know is if Arrow Spence would have fought David, David Milk of Magnesia, if Errol Spence would have fought David and his niece and them, David Avenesian, y'all would have clowned him to the heavens and say, what the hell is he doing fighting a guy like this when he didn't been champion for this long? Why is he fighting David Anesthesia, Anastasia? David Amnesia, why is he fighting him? Y'all would have told me that. So yeah, like I knew Terrence Buck Crawford's always been an excellent fighter. He's extremely, extremely skilled. He got pop in both hands. He's a great, but he can switch hit. He's supremely skilled, a world round. He's a well rounded fighter in general. So I knew this was going to happen. So this fight didn't tell me anything about what's going to happen with Errol Spence because David Anesthesia don't fight nothing like Errol Spence. He don't got the same type of, he's not in the same stratosphere as Errol Spence. And for two, the dude was a, like, a, was light work, a glorified sparring partner. So Terrence did what he had to do and did what he was supposed to do at the end of the day. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.